Good afternoon. Uh, yes, we're on time. Just about. Almost. <laughs> Hi, welcome to my um, daily broadcast. This is the weekend edition, hence the casual attire. And today's episode is number 548. And the topic today, which I'm plugged in, is to death to us part. And the subtext of that is when we can't control things. And I'm going to break those apart in different ways and talk about why this topic today. Before I get to that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and help strong, successful women uh, help strong, successful women. I'll say it again clearly. Find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, and I've been doing these talks now for got to be coming up for two years now, and every day for the last whoosh, at least 18, 19 months, they've been every day, which is why I'm now, now at number 548. And the overarching title of these is Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today's topic, um, hmm. it's on the agenda for me right now because two things. One is the big reason is because I was, at, I was at a memorial today for a friend of mine who passed back in October. And it was the second memorial we had. And it was a very heartfelt, beautiful connection, communion, talking and, and connection. But it brought up a lot of stuff for people. And it was definitely evocative about losing those you love. And since I did a talk back on Tuesday when this head cold started, you can still hear the drags of it right now, I did a Facebook Live saying um, in Sickness and Health, you know, how do you deal with that intimacy challenges? So I had the idea today to do another piece of the <laughs> wedding <laughs> vows for the fun of using that title. It was to a death to us part. But I'm really talking about is about when you're out of control. Because the thing about, well, let me say it this way. The challenge when you lose somebody to something that dramatic like death, it could be something not as fatal, but it could be something as inevitable. One of the biggest things that we forget is that we can't control things because human beings like to think they're in control, in charge, handling the life, make things work. And what I've become very aware of is how little control we really have. The real control we have truly is over our own internal state. What happens outside of us is beyond our control. We can have influence on it, but if we control it, we end up killing it energetically. Now, I'm talking about killing people, but when you raise kids and you control them, don't let them be free, they end up being stifled and they don't necessarily thrive. They may become rebels or they may just become um, people pleasers. That happens with family dynamics sometimes. Now, a big piece of just dropped in your lap right there. Hmm. But I want to speak back to the passing transition of life. Um, and having lost a parent, I know some of the feeling of that. It's not the same as losing a partner, I understand, and I have not lost a partner that, that way. Um, but I, I just want to put this on the table for those of you who have lost a partner to death, to an illness or an accident or a tragedy that took away from you. If you haven't let go yet, and I understand there's a, there's a desire to hold them sacred somehow, even though their life may not have been perfect or the way they treat you may not have been perfect, there is this desire to hold them sacred because they're gone now. And it's very understandable. It's a human desire. But underneath that, what really is going on is that we're not willing to move on because we're afraid of losing control of the situation. And I had this download today. I was on the way home from the, from the um, memorial with a friend of mine. And she was talking about stuff with her family dynamic. And what I already got clear about, because she said, she said it basically, and I sort of echoed it back to her, was is that really the, the challenge is that the work she has to do is within her. The much you want to fix somebody else, it wasn't, up to the, it wasn't up to her to fix them. It was up to her to fix herself, meaning that where she felt upset, discord, wanted to heal things, it wasn't about interacting with the other person to make it right. It's about interacting with herself to make it right. And this is the same framework, which is the same thing for losing somebody tra tragic uh, in, in some tragic experience. But also if you lose somebody who just leaves, because the challenge with relationships is, well, it's not the challenge, it's the opportunity of relationships is, it's a lesson in being out of control. For some of you out there, not everybody, but for a lot of people out there, being in a relationship brings with it all these opportunities to let go of controlling the actual relationship. There may be a desire or an intention or a wishful thinking to say, well, I'll get this person in a relationship, we'll have a great time together, I'll make this happen, I'll have this happen, do all this and do all that. All those makes, have to, shoulds, moving, pushing around, that's all control. 
And when you're involved with somebody else, the funny thing is, there's another person involved. Like surprise. And so their choices, their volition, their intentions may not have play in your illusion. I was say delusion for a second there, but your intention of what you want to happen. So that is an indication that maybe you want to let go of control just a bit and maybe enroll and see where they are in their vision. So maybe there's a joint venture together. So if you're in a relationship right now where you're still exploring the relationship, but you're still feeling attached to how things should be, that's another clue, by the way, when you have that attachment to how things should be, there is going to be a, um, it's, it's actually an underground um, sublimated need for control. And the thing I want to keep saying, clear as a bell, is that in relationship, the one thing you cannot do is control it. It's not, it just doesn't work that way. So I think I'm just going to leave the two left of part part aside for now because I've, I think you've covered that point. But the control piece is really becoming more clear for me as I talk about this, recognizing how we have an attachment to wanting to be in control because when we're in control, we feel safe. We feel that we have handled everything and that we won't go crazy. And some blend of those three. There's a few other things as well. But that control piece, holding on to control, which is very um, limiting in aspect, because once you're controlling, you can't move around very much because you're stuck to control. It's it's a decidedly limited way of being. And for a lot of people, this may apply to your work life as well as your personal life, that letting go of control, whether it's done very gently and releasing slowly but surely as you gently step into trust and open up and lean back into that place of openness, or whether you're forced to let go because of a traumatic situation that happens, hence the two deathless part point. There's a spectrum of this um, removal of or release of control. And for some people, that release of control is the biggest challenge of their whole life. It's the most frustrating thing for a lot of people because what happens in some situations, and this happens in corporate work, it happens in spiritual work, it happens in other places too. The thing, biggest lesson in spiritual work is we are never in control. When you're on the spiritual path and you're studying with spiritual teachings or you're following a path, whatever it is for you, the biggest lesson you'll learn is that acceptance is the only way to grow spiritually. Because acceptance is the opposite of control. Control is not fix things to make things work a certain way. When you accept, you let, let it be what it is. And that freedom, by the way, when you let go and you accept, will give you freedom to live life more fully, more expressively, more joyfully, more easily, more comfortably, and more fluidly because there's no need to control. It sounds like it sounds like a simple thing, but I would suggest, I would say, that for many, many people, the idea of letting go of control is about as comfortable to them as saying they have to give up their firstborn or to lose a limb. It's that attached to them. They're so scared of letting go of control. And yet when you do, when you do let go of control, really learn how to let go of control in areas of life that are important to you, you'll discover a freedom and a place of peace that allows you to have what you want easily, effortlessly, and joyfully. So listen, I keep learning myself. I'm not saying I'm good at it yet or perfect at it, but I'm certainly getting better at it because I recognize more and more that control is something I have no... Um, it's like there's no, there's no scorecard for control. If you think that by having more control, you have better scores, you're really in, in trouble. Now, side by slide, because I just had a flash on something else. If you're a performing athlete, then certainly some level of control is necessary for you to perform at your best in terms of athletic abilities, whether it's dance, ice skating, running, some other sport. But there's also at the same time, a letting go of control so you can actually flow more effectively. I know that some of the best runners, they are actually more out of control and more in flow when they're running. So they're actually into a groove that is effortless. They're not even controlling anything and it works more effectively. So control can play into something of that nature, but it's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the energetic control of circumstance, situation and relationship, especially with other people that have you think that somehow by controlling you make it better. Here's a hint. It won't. The best you can do is serve the best way you can. If there are situations, for example, I'm just I'm just literally watching downloads happen in front of me. If you're in a situation, for example, where you have an, um, a relative who is um, an elder relative who's having Alzheimer's or dementia, something like that, 
then yes, you need to provide a certain form of control, which is really containment. It's not control so much as it's creating containment for them for their safety and for the safety of those around them. But see, containment is not the same as control because control is much more judgment-based. Containment is a support service offering to help somebody else in that situation. So knowing the difference between containment and control is another piece of the puzzle because control itself is a dangerous place to play because the thing with control is it's the extremely extremely tight and constricted way of being and the word that comes up, comes up for me when we talk about control is brittle meaning that it's not something that is flexible control is very strict and held, held tight and hurting and painful and reality is it's also very fragile it is, it is brittle which means that it can break so when you understand that being in flow is a healthy way of living life, a more effective way of living life, and a much healthier contribution to a relationship, you'll discover a whole new level of love, intimacy, and connection that you may never have had before. And that, I think, will do it. <laughs> I appreciate you being with me, as always. This is my daily broadcast, and uh, weekend edition hits the casual attire. You can still hear my head cold is going through. I'm almost done with it, I hope. We'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow brings. Um, yeah, lovely sounds. So, your homework tonight, <laughs> your homework tonight, is look at what you're actually attached to. What is it that you feel more enough, the, more about that you cannot let go of? That's the thing to, where, you're con, where you're controlling too much. And can you let go of that? Can you expand into it? Can you release? That'll do. If you want to go deeper in this work, the work I talk about all the time, I'm going to leave the link in the comments for my discovery session, which you can have uh, you can sign up for today. Um, I'm offering a few holiday specials, which I'll talk about when we talk. But I'm not going to put those in the comments. And this, by the way, is a Facebook Live, as usual, my daily Facebook Live on my personal page, which then goes to my business page on Facebook, then to YouTube, then to my podcast. I'll give you the links so you can find those. My business page has um, all of my broadcasts on, um, easy to find, because my personal page, I do a lot of other stuff besides this. But on my business page, you'll find all my broadcasts pretty much in sequence, from the newest to the oldest. And my business page on Facebook is barryselby.author. Same same view is available on YouTube. If you go to my YouTube, YouTube, channel, YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There is a playlist in there called Messages from the Masculine where all these are listed. You can list, watch them anywhere from anywhere you want to randomly go through them, sort through titles, choose what you want, enjoy them. There's 540 something to look at there. And thirdly, as, as they're slowly getting rolled over, I've got them in my podcast, which is also called Messages from the Masculine. We also subscribe to the podcast. You can download those episodes, which are basically the audio versions of my first um, few few dozen. I'm not sure how many I got out there now. Quite a few um, Facebook lives that have done over the last couple of years. So with that, I thank you for watching. Any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them below, and I'll respond after I sign off. And uh, once again, as always, oh by the way, I'll be back in tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time, my standard time. I appreciate you being with me as always, and I invite you to take care of yourself. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.